in the zoning board to order this evening. We have two cases, and uh, we will begin with case 19-27, which is 374 Main Street. This is a case that was uh, began uh, uh, and has uh, uh, been continued three times. So we're here tonight to uh, move on that case again. And hopefully we can bring it to a conclusion of some kind. I'm not going to read the, uh, the legal notice. We did that back at the first, uh, first case uh, meeting, uh, first meeting on this case. So I would just uh, jump right into it, and I would ask you to what happened since the last meeting, and uh, where, what do you want to do tonight? Well, I think we would like to, based on the last meeting, Like to withdraw the wall sign, the one that's on the the one that's on the on the roof side. You want to withdraw that one, okay? And we subsequently have uh, applied for the permit to replace the top section of the sign. So tonight we just would like to reassess the uh, changeable electronic message center. As was included in the application. Yeah, you haven't made any changes to no it. Changes to that section. Okay. Uh, so Sorry. we're looking at this point to get rid of the wall sign. So that clearly didn't seem like a great idea and didn't seem like it was going to be approved. And then we have gone to the building department and applied for the by right to replace the sign. So all we really want to do is now discuss the digital section. Okay, I would point out that the uh, the voting members on this case will be Mr. Redford, uh, Hillary, Nick, and uh, Eric, and myself. Those are the five people. So I will go to them right now and ask them for any comment or question they like to put forward to you now. Nick, I'll start way down at your end. How's right. that? Uh, is that a sample I see? This, this is the sample for the building inspector for okay. the new so. Not to this All right, so I think I have more of a comment, but I just want to either reaffirm this. So the, the light that's there, the sign that's there now is already backlit, so it's already a sign. The dimension's not changing. The brightness, let's call it, isn't changing. All it's changing is instead of someone going up there and switching the letters out manually, it will be able to do that automatically. Okay. I'm having a hard time um, seeing any issues with that as one board member. And given precedence, I don't. I don't think it would necessarily be fair to. Anyways, 
That's all I really have. Uh, Bob? Uh, so you, you, you're, the, the wall sign fine is a, well, that's something we're going to have to vote on, I think, separately. Is the, we'll have the board on accepting his right, withdrawal. Right, yes. accepting his request to withdraw right. the wall sign. Yep. And now you're still asking for a variance for a electronic LED sign to replace the freestanding sign that's there now. You know? the small section on the bottom. Just the change will be the board that's Okay. That's all going to remain. Okay. But it's still going to be an electronic changing that's, sign, that's which is uh, by the bylaws. By the bylaws. What you're asking for is a variance, and I believe you went over the criteria at the last meeting. We asked for your uh, 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 explanations uh, for the criteria for a, uh, I think at that time, for the wall sign and the electronic sign. And at that time, I said I, I did not see justification at all uh, in, for a variance. Uh, for an electronic sign, and I, I still feel that way, that it, it specifically denies it or specifically prohibits it in the bylaws to have an electronic sign unless you're a, this, this is, it's, we didn't make the bylaws, this is what was adopted by the town, and this is, they, they allow service stations to have a reader a changing for the gas prices, gasoline prices, but that is the only exception as far as I know. What's across the street is across the street. That doesn't have any bearing on what's- Well, somehow they got a permit for that. Well, so. they, evidently they did, but so be it. It has no bearing on what's, what's being up before us now. So my feeling is uh, I, I would not be in favor of a, uh, a variance for that. Okay, Eric. Um, well, I just probably, you know, you remember I shared the same opinion as Bob uh, in terms of, you know, it's explicitly prohibited. The variance criteria is oftentimes very difficult to meet. Otherwise, you know, anyone could get well, it. For signs, it's honestly impossible to meet because signage has nothing to do with that box. Well, I mean, it, it could. I mean, it, I guess you, it would you, you depend could, on the You could have a rock, rock ledge, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll, I agree. I don't know any sign or a variance that could meet this criteria that Gary has for it. Um, it just won't meet it. So, I I couldn't speculate on, you know, hypothetical. All I can do is, is see, you know, what's presented here. And I, I can't say that I've had a, a change of opinion since the last time. Hillary. Um, I concur with what has been said. Um, I sympathize with the plight of like a nano lumens or a the animated sign versus an LED message board versus what you have now. And clearly the bylaws state that even what you have now is above and beyond what we allow now. So I have a difficult time voting for the variance to approve your new sign. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I know I'm not a voting member, but I have looked into this. Do you mind if I comment? Oh, you're certainly entitled to comment. You're just not a voting member. Right, I understand. But you should certainly comment, absolutely. With respect to the bylaw, I, I actually was involved with the, the other town meeting members when that bylaw was passed. And we did have this type of sign in mind. We did not want those lighted signs, particularly on Main Street or anywhere else in town. 
and you cite the, I think, could be mistaken, uh, the only exception in TAN. I don't think we have them anywhere else in TAN. The only exception in TAN is directly across. Right. And it's which and brings. It's a similar exception are gas stations. No. But gas stations were considered when the bylaw was passed as an appropriate variance because people are, would like to see the uh, would like to see the price easily. And I think another thing to, that that I thought about as I looked at this and, and drove by that intersection in that area is one of the most dangerous places in town. We have more accidents there than any place else. It's a combination of factors. And another s distracting sign, I think, would would not help and could contribute to the danger of that of that intersection. As far as the technology being an appropriate way to reduce the the risk or the the risk of injury for changing those signs, I do think that's a good point. But I think it's up to the town meeting and the bylaws to make that change, not this not this board. Um, and as far as a hardship uh, to grant a variance, um, I was in town when that uh, when that car wash was built, and it was, um, from from my impression anyway, it's been very successful. I don't think there's been any shortness of business at that car wash, and to be a bit uh, a bit glib, perhaps, if we had any more business at that car wash, that intersection would just get a whole lot more dangerous and more crowded. Um, and, and then the, the, the big thing is the precedence. You drive down Main Street, and it, it, it might not be perfect, but we're trying to work on it to, to implement the vision of the CPDC, and a lot of lighted signs would not contribute to that vision as I understand it. And I think that if we grant this, We'd be, we'd be at least under pressure, if not obligated, to grant many more, which drastically change the character of Main Street, in my opinion. So um, I would just like to, to add those thoughts to the conversations that have already been made. My thoughts on this before we move to uh, take action, take a voting action, is that uh, I think the day and age of the kind of signage that's there now should be behind us. We're in an electronic age. We're in an electronic signage age. Whether we want to like it or not, and I think whenever they decide to re revisit the signage portions of the bylaws, they need to take that into consideration. I would agree. Okay? Electronics are the way to go. And uh, I don't care where, you, where you're putting it uh, and what time you're doing it in. Uh, but uh, we are faced with the bylaws as they exist today. And I frankly don't think the case has been made in compliance with the requirements, the criteria requirements for variance to, uh, to move forward on it in a positive way on my part as well. I think that's, a, that's an issue, as Jamie says, for future discussion by the town meeting members and people who are on the bylaw committee. And I would hope they would take a hard look at that in the future. And maybe whenever that happens, maybe it could be done at that time, okay? <laughs> but today, I think it's very hard to approve something like that. And so I'll leave it at that. Uh, from my viewpoint, I will now, well, I don't know. I should look down at Mark. Do you have anything to add to this conversation at this moment? No, I don't. Okay. I'll open it up for public uh, input. Is there any public input tonight? Yes, Tony. Uh, Tony, the resident 120 Jump Street. Uh, yep. First off, Mr. Chairman, uh, point of order, should we have been sworn in before uh, stating uh, before? Uh, that's true. <laughs> Let me swear you in right now. Anybody who wants to talk on this thing, would you please stand? Okay. Raise your right hand. No, they're in a different. Okay, it's just a tool. Okay. <laughs> Please stand and raise your right hand and say, I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. The answer is I do. Okay, you're on, Tony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just wanted to say that I agree with uh, the board, what I heard the board say, that the sign doesn't meet all four criteria for variance that the 
zoning bylaw specifically prohibits it, so it would definitely uh, derogate from the intent of the bylaw. Um, and that's about it. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Then I'll close the public portion. Any further comments from the board? Yes, Nick. No, I just want to make one more comment because I agree with the rest of the board, but I do think that this particular case has merit. Every particular applicant is unique. Um, we're not talking about a, a business that doesn't already have a backlit sign. You're basically there's a backlit sign right there. And all of this applicant seems to me is presenting a case where they just want to modernize it. They're going from an incandescent to an LED bulb, going from a fluorescent backlit screen to a screen that the text change. Colors aren't changing, it's not flashing. It's going to be one color text, I believe, right? It's not going to be any brighter. I, I personally don't see how that would be more distracting. Uh, to me, that just seems like you're taking a sign that already exists, that's grandfathered. I don't really care how Vaveline got it or anyone else, but I drive down that street and I see a lot of backlit screens. I see a lot of lit up signs, and they don't move either. This just seems to me like a sign that's not changing. It's just getting upgraded, getting modernized. And I know the bylaws have their case that we have, we have to up a certain bar to reach. But you know, I'll say it, I think using a variance criteria for sign design review is an almost impossible bar. And I don't think many other communities do use a variance criteria when it comes to uh, sign design review. That's all I gotta say. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? I guess if we vote on this thing and turn it down, you're gone for two years, okay? If you were to take a different approach, perhaps, I only suggest this, to withdraw without prejudice, that they may give you the opportunity to pursue this within that period of time. So I guess I make that suggestion to you and you can decide which way you want to go. I, think that's a I don't know when the, you know, I don't know when the town meeting starts reviewing the bylaws again, but that's a kind of a continuing process, I think. So I, think I don't know whether this good. kind of a subject matter would find its way back to, to a bylaw well, change. I don't or not. it does because it, it seems quite slighted to gas stations at this point. Nothing has been different from a price to a, a word. before us at this time is a request to withdraw both the... In, uh, in that particular case, I don't think we would need two separate votes then. If he's withdrawing the entire, we draw the entire application. application, that's it. Right. And we can do it in one swoop, I think. So I'll, I'll entertain that motion. Well, okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that uh, we accept the applicant's uh, request to uh, withdraw his application uh, for uh, new signage at, uh, the, at uh, 374 Main Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, quote, the car wash that we all know, sanitized car wash, and uh, allow him to uh, withdraw his application without prejudice. Do a second? Second. Eric, it's a second. All those in favor? All opposed? I guess it's 500. Oh, 05. 500. Okay. I think that's done. Thank, you. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'll get you a small one. Thank you. Okay. The next case on the agenda this evening is 264 High Street, case 20-1, first one of 2020. I'll read the uh, legal notice. Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Great Room at Pleasant Street Center, 49 Pleasant Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Wednesday, March 4th, 2020 at 7 p.m. 
on the application of Bill Nolan and Savoy. Nolan, architects pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 9. Special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaw 7.0, 7.3, and 7.3.2 to demolish the existing non-conforming garage and construct a new garage with a non-conforming side yard setback to an existing non-conforming dwelling on the property located at 264 High Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the following, the select board, town clerk, police department, fire department, <coughs> building department, conservation commission, health department, assessor's office, Engineering Division, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath. So if you wish any of you here tonight to speak, please stand and raise your right hand. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The answer is I do. Okay, then I'm going to turn the floor over to you and you can present to us what you are looking for tonight for a poker. Okay, first off, I'd like to apologize. I forgot my stand, but uh, my, my current stand you got is, a good is stand. nicer <laughs> looking than the other one. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Bill Nolan from Savoy Nolan Architects. Um, I'm here. Yeah, maybe uh, you come just a little bit further. That'll work. Yeah, you might have to show it back and forth when you talk. But that's okay. I'm here with my associate, Abby Zuger from Savoy Nolan. And uh, we're here representing Nolan Morrissey, who's the owner of 265 And with her is her neighbor across the street, 265, uh, Mrs. DeMarco. Um, so uh, this is the house here, to, uh, High Street. This is the property here. The existing house uh, is in red. It's a uh, modest uh, colonial style house, uh, three bedrooms. Um, front portion of the house is a living room. Uh, the back portion is split between a kitchen and a dining room, and it has a uh, semi-attached garage, a uh, single car garage, with an open air breezeway connector. Uh, so I don't really show you can kind of see it here. Okay. Uh, just a brief history of the project. Um, uh, Noreen's sister, Brenda, who currently lives out of state, um, unfortunately has ALS, and she is, uh, Noreen is, is um, offered to take her uh, uh, have her come live with her so she can provide some care for her. Um, so that's the, the genesis of the, of the project. There are two main criteria to make this project successful. It's a, um, a bedroom and, and bathroom on the first floor uh, so that her sister Brenda can access that. This is uh, this blue rectangle here. I believe that this can be done by right. It's within the setback, so we're not here before you for this. I just wanted to show it to you. Mm -hmm. uh, why we're here before you the, the garage aspect of it. Um, so uh, Brenda actually, I believe, does still drive, um, uh, but she it, it's hard for her to walk around. It. So um, given the wind, as you can see in the photos, although there hasn't been much snow this year, uh, we took it during the snow. Um, that's, a, that's a dangerous scenario for us to navigate through. Um, so one of the conditions was to maintain the existing garage um, spot that no wind currently uses and create another one for our sister. So the idea is the sister can go into the garage, navigate up through a ramp to the first floor where her new bedroom is going to be That's a brief history of the project. Right now, so this is what we're looking to do. Again, this is the uh, modest sized bedroom with a, a, an attached bathroom off the side that's accessed off of the existing bedroom. The uh, kitchen in the existing house is actually going to stay almost identical. I think really the only difference is that um, uh, the existing dining room window is going to become a door now to the, to the system. Uh, the change why we're here before you is we do need to increase the garage in order to provide a, uh, a set of car in there. Uh, we looked at a few different options and really uh, there, were, there, there weren't very many available to us um, given the size of the, the or given the proximity of the house on the lot. Uh, so tandem garage is really uh, our, our only viable option here. Um, 
so we are uh, maintaining the existing side setback of 10 the, uh, the uh, required setback in this zone is, is um, 15. Uh, we're, we're intensifying it by pushing the garage a little bit forward and a little bit back and creating uh, an interior connection into the house uh, so that the sister can use. We're going to build a ramp inside so she can she can walk. Uh, she just the stairs are difficult for her, uh, to connect back to the house. Um, it's a pretty modest uh, addition. Uh, the garage is going to remain a single story. Um, garage, no, no appreciable space above it. Uh, it's a pity roof, um, so there'll be some volume up there, but just to get the, the rain out there, no, no additional uh, living area up there. And I think that's, uh, that's it. However, and I don't want to complicate things, so we can forget this if it does complicate things. Um, and I realize that this is poor timing, but I'd rather be right late than wrong. So uh, Abby and I were discussing uh, potentially at the beginning uh, while we were preparing for this meeting. Um, the reason, so we're showing a, 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 a hipped roof in the front here. So it's a sloped roof that goes this way, it hips on the side and then returns back to a gable, sorry, a gable back here. Um, and the reason why we had originally proposed it like this, we were thinking, you know, can we get this to fit? Can we get it to work within the budget and all that? Um, and, and kind of bypassing some of the more intricate details. The reason why we, we decided to put this hip roof in here is that a gable coming into an existing house can be a tricky detail if it's not done right, but we did, upon further review, find a way that we could do it. So what we would be asking the board, if it's not too much, is a, a minor aesthetic change where this gable would extend up to the front. I think the, 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 the gable facing the front would just be more uh, appropriate to the aesthetics of the house than, than what we're showing here. It's not a deal breaker either way, but we just wanted to be up front. I certainly didn't want to put the building inspector in a position where he had to deny uh, 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 the, the, the permit based on um, a, a small change like that. So I did want to bring it to the board's attention. If I'm complicating things, we can just strike it. I think that's it. Um, if we have it, answer any questions. We'll find out if there's any questions. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'll start down this end with uh, Jamie. I'll let you get started. I, I I would. Would you mind sure. just penciling in, since you're an architect and yeah. can draw very well, what that revised gable would look like, or do you already have it done? So I, I drew it, and this was just oh, okay. uh, our sketches right there. And I'm happy okay. to show the board. Oh, all right, all right, okay. Yep. So. Um, the only other, or two other, two other comments or questions when when i first looked at this small detail detail i when i first looked at this i thought it might be possible it would be a farther encroachment and 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 a more serious variance to, rather than tandem to go wide and you could almost do it but i think from from um the owner's standpoint this is a little more difficult but from a uh, a variant standpoint, it's a lot more acceptable. Sure. I, I think I, the only other possible alternative would be a double garage, and this is much better. And just the final thing I'd like to say, I did drive by and take a look, and not that the existing garage, detached gar garage is not nice looking, but I think this is a whole lot nicer looking and looks more finished and complete. So I. I can uh, understand the, the plan, and it seems to make sense. Excuse me, Chair. I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I for, forgot to mention that I do have two letters from, from the abiding neighbors uh, next door on both sides, in, uh, letters of support. I forgot to mention that. Uh, can, I, can I submit them? Yeah, thank you. <coughs> thank you. So those two letters are from the uh, abutters. If you're looking at our Austin Street, directly from the left and to the right. And, um, Across the street, uh, the, the, um, or neighbor across the street is very. Yeah, I'll, I'll read them at the record. Yeah, sorry about that. Hillary. Um, I too went by the site and um, I was surprised to see that the breezeway was still <laughs> open to the elements because usually they get closed in long before now. Um, and I do agree that that this is, I like the gabled roof idea better uh, aesthetically, but that is up to you. And, um, you want to confirm that? <laughs> um, 
I don't see that this is a detriment to the neighborhood or to the property and the abutting the neighbors either. Thank you. Thank you. Eric. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a, a great project, really straightforward. I think the only question that I had side is more administrative for us. If the plans that we have tonight get stands, does that create a problem with the gate with the you know amended gable aspect of it? My personal opinion is no. Okay. I, I, Mark, I, I would think Thank not. You. It's it sounds like it's a minor change. That's something that he can work with the building inspector. And I think if the building inspector felt that it was a major change. He would advise them, and then they may have to uh, then come back. But I, right. it doesn't sound like it's a major. It doesn't sound issue. like it to me. No. And if, if you guys you know, <coughs> bring it up in your conditions or whatever in your final your final say, then regardless of what the drawing is, it's in the record. Right. So this I, is what we're proposing. Just you you call yourself an architect? No, that looks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And and I think generally when we make a decision, uh, we will use the words general conformance with the architectural renderings presented. Uh, and that's what we mean. You know, we realize there could be changes down the road. Yeah. Give Mark a lot of rope there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's uh, yeah, I, I, I too took a, you know, went down and uh, viewed the site and everything else. And I didn't see any big uh, issues here. Uh, uh, the proposed improvements, uh, I think, will increase the footprint, but uh, will not increase any existing non-conformities at the site at all. And in regards to the, and this is all in regards to the Wesley side yard setback, as you said, uh, where already there is encroachment into the side yard uh, setback. But again, that is a structure that was built in 1938 prior to zoning. I don't know when that garage was if that was constructed then or not but it doesn't matter it's been there I'm sure for over 10 years and it's, it's there yeah. uh, so and we're not encroaching any further than what the existing is uh, I don't believe the improvements and I, I think they're very nice improvements very good it, uh, it looks look fine uh, the improvements uh, will not be readily discernible for anybody riding by on uh, High Street at all. It, I think after it's done, it's going to look relatively the same. same. Uh, so I, I don't see that there's going to be any uh, substantial detriment to the neighborhood at all. Okay. I, I would support this. Nick? Uh, pretty much echo everything that's been said thus far. I don't, you're not encroaching further into the setbacks. You're just extending the nonconformity. It's a good project. Um, it's always nice. I'm not supposed to judge the architecture, but it's always nice when it actually looks really nice. Um, <laughs> so I support this. I think this has been well done. I think it's uh, a very, very, probably, it's probably one of the best approaches you can put with the space you've got available to play with. And uh, as, as has been said before, you're not creating any new nonconformities. And it's, you know, you did what you could do on a very, very small lot. Uh, I think the garage is a little snug, but I don't know what more you could do about it, okay? <laughs> but as long as she's a, a walking member of society, she, she, that should work. So uh, I have absolutely no problem with this, this request. Thank you. Thank you. I will now open it up for public input. Is anyone here who would like to speak on this subject? Again, Sai, excuse me. You have to swear people in for this particular yeah. case, too? I did, yeah. Oh, he, he, he did. Yeah. He, he did right. I, I, didn't wake up. I missed it. I was shuffling papers. Yeah, you were. <laughs> Sorry. My name is Elizabeth Marco. I reside at 265 High Street. Okay, you're not one of these letters. No. Okay. In person. <laughs> Thank you. But we are um, wholeheartedly helping and we support Millie's project. And, um, okay. Happy that you can hear your sister. Any other comments? 
Thank you. Do you want to speak again? Any either one of you? Then I'll close the public portion of the uh, of the meeting. I will read it to the record the uh, two letters I did get since we got them this evening. The first one is uh, from Riley and Amanda McCabe. Uh, As owners of the property of 268 High Street, we'd like to express our support of the planned renovation of the adjoining property at 264. High Street, we attest that we have no objection to the construction plans. Please feel free to contact us if any other any further information is required. And the other one is from uh, blah, 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 blah. Olivia Hecht, I believe. I currently reside at 258 High Street next to Ms. Morrissey, who resides at 264 High Street and currently has ZBA case 20-01 before you as a special permit consideration. My home and property are directly adjacent to Ms. Morrissey's property. I understand the renovations are intended to make a property accessible for a disabled sister's move to the home, and I am in full support of the renovation plans, which she has also shared with me. I hope the board will also provide approval of this permit. Unfortunately, I am unable to attend the public meeting. However, please consider this letter of support in my absence. So there's that. Any other further comment from the board members? If not, I will entertain a motion. The, the voting members will be Nick, Bob, Eric, myself, and Hillary. Uh, Nick, would you like to give us a shot? Sure. I move to grant the petitioner Bill Nolan and Savoy Nolan Architects, a special permit under section 7.0, 7.3, and 7.32 uh, to demolish the existing non conforming garage and construct a new garage with a non conforming side yard setback to an existing non conforming dwelling on the property located at 264 High Street in Reading, Mass as shown on the certified plot plan prepared by Stephen M. Molesic, um, due dated January 28, 2020, certified by the same architect, engineer. Uh, special permit is subject to the following conditions. The petition shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plans prior to the issuance of the foundation permit for the work. The petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector along with the as-built foundation plans prior to the issuance of the building permit. And the as-built plan showing the completed construction shall be submitted to the building inspector immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Anybody? On the board, have comments to that motion? Is it okay? I'll we'll accept the second. Second. Bob, second. Okay. All in favor? Five zero zero. It's approved. Great. Stand by. I'll stamp you a copy. No, I've got it. Well, if you've got a copy, no, I'll take it. Uh, 
14 days to write up the opinion. Yeah, sorry. 14 days to write it up and add 20 on top of that, so it's 34 total. 34 total. Good luck with the project. Do you, do you hope to break ground in the next month or two? 34 days. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I guess we have a couple of set of couple sets of minutes. Anybody need time to look at them? I uh, I printed them out and took a look, and uh, I think they need a lot of work. To be honest with you. Okay. <laughs> I would agree. Yeah. I think, yeah. I, I know that we are you know members present at both meetings. I think we're missing a lot of the people that were present. Uh, I noticed, like on the uh, December fourth meeting, would it be we got the, the guy in blue stated. Yeah. 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 Uh, my suggestion would be that we give him what comments we have. Yes, but and not approve them until he prints out a clean copy. I I would and agree. We'll, we'll and we'll, we'll give you some time. general comments, and, yeah. and you can, we can mark them. It and the <laughs> Yeah, we won't say anything. Uh, oh, thank you. We can do it. <laughs> so, appreciate it. Right. Yeah, I, I would say so. So, if you want to hit the first one first. Then yeah, let's yeah. hit December 4. Hey, December 4. Yeah, let's browse through it quickly. Yeah. As I say, I noticed uh, a lot of members, mm -hmm. as, you, as you go through even, mm -hmm. and you're talking about people, right. they're not listed as members present. Right. Uh, I know there were uh, a couple of select board members mm -hmm. that were there. Uh, yeah, and you go to page two in uh, the third paragraph, the guy in blue, yeah. like code red, whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, okay, you go to the uh, one, two, three, four, fifth paragraph. And I think it's the second sentence. Mr. Chase told Mr. Redfern that they had not talked to the other about it because he does not live there. Period. Okay. He stated, well, who? Mr. Chase, I believe it is, stated or said <coughs> that he talked to the tenants at that house and they replaced the driveway rather than trying to fix it and just making it worse. Uh, I don't think we need to. I think it might like, like seem like an old alley that was there. I mean, that's just pure speculation. Yeah, I think the whole yeah. sentence needs work. The whole thing needs work there. Yeah. And, uh, and they said, uh, yeah, that was good. Oh, uh, okay, page three, second paragraph. A gentleman commented. We can get names in there. Yeah. And I know it may be difficult, but we should have a sign-in sheet. Right. And even if not, yeah, we and, and we had the videos. Right. And even if not, we could 
All you gotta do is figure out who's dressed in blue. Then, then you say something, yeah, resident or something. Right. And uh, let's see, I think the fourth paragraph, she has as built plans. I think it's as built everywhere else. Yep. I believe that's what she did. Gentleman in blue again, now, uh, down in the paragraph starting with Mr. Heath. Yep. The general I, ones, I, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. But I think it needs to be gone through again and kind of polished yeah. up. So yeah. this is my first time reading them, so you are. Um, I will work on these. Tomorrow. Anybody else has any feel for it? Like, well, I had all the ones you did too. But, you know, I think it just needs a good, uh, good reading, Andrew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the spell tracks and yep. grammar checks and all that stuff. You got it. Um, I just want to comment on this one, um, page three, paragraph one, two, three, four, I don't know, four or five, um, Mr. Heap stated something, the three scopes, if that could be defined a little bit better, because it's just like, yeah. the three scopes before this board. Sorry, which paper? Page three. Of the 12 four meetings? Yes. yes. Yeah. Somehow it's not making sense, <laughs> and I was there. Well, I think it could be simply said that, yeah. Yeah. it could be simply said that Mr. Heap stated that if there are any concerns about this project other than the three before the board this evening, that evening, this evening, it should be properly raised outside this discussion, right. something like that. Yep. And, and we have uh, Sky uh, opening the, for public comment, and then the next sentence is a closed public comment. It would be good if See. no public response from right. see. And then, yeah. Yeah. Okay. so you can you can you can fix that one up, Andrew. Yep, I'll do and we'll that review time. it again at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as uh, twelve eighteen is concerned, I know that one of them was on the second page where you're talking about a motion made by Mr. or sec seconded by somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. You gotta be able to fill that in. Then I'm having a mental mental lapse on that, on that second page. Uh, huh? On the first page there, uh, page 1914, vote taken. I think you got Eric's name spelled on the other. With a T, yeah. yeah. Oh, S-T. So. Seen a lot of variations, but that <laughs> was I'm sure you've yeah. seen them, but it's spelled, like it's spelled the same as upper right. under members present. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And let's see. Uh, on, the, on the second page, the fourth paragraph, I think it needs to be worked on here that uh, Mr. Zuck, I believe the light poles are brighter than the candle lights. Yeah. I think what he means is. Brighter than the existing lighting. Right. Yeah. Right. Something there. Just, just needs, you know, some, some polishing. Yep. I right. like to let's see, page three, third paragraph. It started with myself in correctly stated uh, meeting on this because signage is a big thing. Right. Can we just say an issue yep. in town? Yeah. I can't recall. I, I maybe did say it was a big thing. That it? Uh, yeah, I think it generally, but I think it just needs to be gone through. Yeah, yeah. The only one you got to refresh my memory on is on page two. Right at the very top, the landscape architect can calculate that they now have 6,200 rather than the original 5,900. Must be square footage. I think either that or the. Oh, it was, yeah. it was written like it was the numbers of shrubs. Yeah, it might have been. I and uh, wow. Yeah, and it, there's a lot of blanks on that second page of the, okay. that, uh, this meeting. Mr. Blank. Well, on a motion made by Mr. and then Mr. Barnett. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Who made the motion, who seconded it. Yep. So 
So we'll take we'll look at these two both again. Yeah. On the what? Yeah. 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 Or whatever. Like. Yeah. Like. Okay. Okay. All right. Anybody other any other things that, that to be discussed? Uh, we did mention uh, Hillary is still writing her letter. Yes. Uh, to submit to the town to become a, me to become a member yeah. instead of an associate oh, yeah. member. And uh, you did bounce off of people about us wanting to maybe try to take John out to lunch or something. No, it's and fine. the answer was it's okay. Okay. If, anybody, yeah. if you're all okay with that, I can bounce it off of John. Sure. Okay. If John's okay, then we'll just have to find a way to board. pick a time to have lunch. Perfect. To give him three to two, three for lunch. Say thank you. Uh -huh. do, do you have a date set for that? No, we got to find out if John wants to do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and if he does, then we'll try to figure out, we'll contact everybody so we can figure out an acceptable date. Yeah. We're we're basically everything we have to do. Meet. Planning update, the town of Reading was awarded an MVP grant from the state, which is a municipal vulnerability preparedness grant, which we will be going through a public planning workshop um, to identify the biggest vulnerabilities and strengths in Reading as, in terms of impacts of climate change, such as flooding or drought or major storms, anything along those lines. We have a public workshop scheduled Tuesday, March 31st from 9 to 5.30. And if there's any board members available that can make it to help put together the plan, um, I would appreciate you guys being there. What's the date? Tuesday, March 31st. Mm. And I where can is do that it till 2. <laughs> That's fine. That would okay. be great. Where is it going to be? It will be in the Reading Public Library in the oh. community room. And you will receive... I'll receive an invitation okay. by writing right. as well. Okay. Uh, okay. Andrew, just so you're aware, in case people have forgotten, about eight or ten years ago, we did a fairly thorough and pretty expensive flood study. Yep. I, I hope I hope you had it. It was done by uh, AECOM yep. over there in Wakefield. Yep. It was it is part of the application. Good. The same. Good. We've got goals in that we want to reach. We studied Willow Street flooding. Right. Um, we have a climate action report already, actually, by the climate here in town. I think we're very well prepared, but this kind of gathers all those priorities into one matrix. So we'll be looking to identify what the biggest priorities are left. So anyone that can be there again would very much appreciate it. Is there any, uh, one last thought before we adjourn, is there any thing going? Yep. <laughs> well. Is there, there anything there. going on? We got to move. We can't <laughs> <laughs> see here. Is there anything going on with regard to the uh, uh, the bylaw committee in terms of modifications to the bylaws that might be coming up at town meeting or so should come up at town meeting? That's the CGDC bylaw committee when it comes to zoning bylaw. Julie Mercier, our community development director, and I are currently working on overhauling the table of uses, um, which we are looking to recategorize uses and look at where they are and aren't allowed and if they should have a special permit process or by right. Um, we're really doing this to modernize the bylaw, look at some new uses such as breweries and pubs that could be allowed in and allow broader definitions to capture all so it's not as specific. Again, this is all still in discussion with CPDC on Monday night we're showing then. Um, but we'll have ample time to talk about it. It shouldn't affect CBA too much. There's a few uses in there that require a special permit by you guys, but from my memory, I don't think we've modified or added any. Yes. I didn't bring it up during, during the discussion, but our, our signage bylaws are, have, let me, how can I say this diplomatically, have been right. questioned by legal counsel. So they are in need of review and update and this bringing in the technology, this might be the time to do it because I do think that your point is well taken. We need to incorporate modern technology, but then on the other hand, we don't want this to look like Route 1 either. I personally well, agree it was on our list.
list to look at this year to do the table of uses and the signage bylaw. But when you look at both of them, it's a lot for CPDC and our staff to tackle both at once, um, especially with the ongoing and expected development projects coming to CPDC. There's only so much we can do in one year. Uh, signage by light is very high on the list and I have been keeping tracks of sign applications that come here and the issues with them and how to modernize this, such as signage on upper floors, illumination and electronic messaging and, and more. Um, but I don't believe we will get to it this year and it can become a pretty controversial topic. Yes. It is a controversial yes. topic and I think that if you look at the lighting around the town, there, there's total inconsistencies in what's going on. Mm -hmm. We are in the electronic age, whether you like it or not. And is it going to create more lighting? Yeah. So what? I and think we need so more lighting. We live when in. you look at our downtown, it's very dark. Um, we don't allow external lighting to go outside of the small area. And so these buildings appear very dark. And okay. to increase safety and perception and better lighting, we I think we, we will have to adjust that. It needs a good look. Yeah. So, yeah. OK. Anything else before we adjourn? Then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary, would you like to second I'll that? second it. Okay, all in favor? Six, zero, zero. You can put your hand up too, John. Okay, thank you.